Stephen, we're sitting here uh, with unprecedented times for both the nation of Ireland and the world. Um, the SSE or Trista League has been postponed, of course, until June the 19th due to these circumstances. It's, it, these are difficult times for the league. Yeah, it's very difficult and d difficult times for everyone. And, you know, sport, t rightly so, takes a back seat, you know. But I think um, from a football perspective, if we can, you know, if we can remember the openings part of the season and remind ourselves of how well it started and look forward to June the 19th when it resumes if it resumes on June the 19th you know there's a lot to look forward to for for supporters mm. and uh, we just want to remind them of that and 2020 season like you say started absolutely fantastically well some packed crowds and some fantastic occasions some fantastic games now just a great game to start you know the, the Shamrock Rovers Dundalk game really captured the imagination you know it was, it was a terrific game and it just shows you if you put a good game in a modern stadium, yep. you know, there's a different perception altogether. And I think uh, some, the quality of the goals are brilliant. Obviously, this Jordan Flores goal is just something really special uh, on the day, you know, incre incredible technique. And How's he done that? How's he got his foot that high and been able to direct it so well as well? It's just a, a, a magical moment, which went worldwide, of course, over five million views around the world. Yeah, really, really uh, unique. Skill set. Obviously, Dundalk have worked on it, but I think they, they had ideas of him heading the ball, but uh, <laughs> yeah. he t you know, he improvised and it's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant goal. Yeah, well, we've got another angle here. Obviously, he's able to get his foot up so high, like you say. And Alan Manners actually on the other angle here, like you'll see, he almost actually keeps it out somehow, which would have been an incredible save, but if just no, really passed him in the you're end. You're not stopping that, you know, you're, not, you're certainly was, not stopping that. And it was just a, a moment which encapsulated what was a frenetic fixture in front of over 7,000 at, at Tallis Stadium. Great crowd, great for Shamrock Rovers to get such a crowd. Mm. Great travelling support from Dundalk. This is obviously the winning goal. And what a goal it was, another another fantastic strike. Yeah, Jack Bourne showed uh, his individual brilliance, really. And that's his left foot to score. <laughs> right, you know, two-footed player to put it right in the corner and absolutely individual brilliance to, to win. A fitting moment to win a great match. Yeah, and it's... Uh, for, for the crowd there as well, for, but also for Shamrock Rovers to, to start the season so well and to have a moment where their supporters, like you say, packed crowd and come, some, maybe some people have come for the first time, to have that moment where they've been able to encapsulate so many people and bring them into the crowd and let them enjoy it. Yeah, I think um, Shamrock Rovers is interesting, to, you know, to have two number 10s like, say, Graham Book and Jack Bourne, Stephen Bradley as a, as a coach, good, you know, terrific young coach, and you know has found has has uh, identified the system to maximise the potential of his two number tens, the three four one two system. Mm. Graham Bourke dropping in fr in, in from from the striker's position. Jack Bourne always having two strikers to hit, picking the ball up in midfield, and a very fluid system. You got Neil Farouja and Liam Scales who stepped up from UCD this season yeah. from the under twenty one national team into 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 Shamrock Rovers first team. And uh, they've had a brilliant start, and they look, 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 look a fine team. And obviously, at the moment, they're ahead of uh, Dundalk, uh, who obviously uh, suffered a defeat in this game. But they've also started the season very well, trying to playing the playing playing the way they they have in recent years. And Vinnie Perth is continuing that that fantastic work into this year. Yeah, Vinnie Perth is is now a, a league winning manager, and you know he you know did their, you know did a terrific job last season, and I think. The thing about Dundalk is that they've got a phenomenal squad, phenomenal strength and depth mm. uh, in all positions. And Patrick Hoban uh, had a quiet season last season by his standards, but he looks back to his best with five goals already. You know, five goals already. And I think um, Mike, the two dirty players really there, Michael Duffy and Patrick McElhenney, Patrick hasn't played this season, so he'll be a big plus when he goes back into the Dundalk team. He's a really gifted a player. Michael Duffy, again, the quality of his goals that, that he scores. He just, you know, he's such, a, he's such an important player for Dundalk. And they're, they're, they're crucial players for Dundalk in the attacking team. And obviously, Dundalk as well will have huge hopes in Europe, like all our teams, but Dundalk more so, I suppose. Well, Dundalk seeded in the Champions League this year. If they, if they win the first round as a seeded team, they've got to be knocked out twice. So it's really, you know, they've got a, a settled team this season. Um, you know, they've good strength and depth, and I think they're ready for, for a really strong European campaign. And on the, another European team, obviously returning to Europe uh, this year, Bohemians. Bohemians obviously 
had a fantastic year uh, last year, a, a young team, and Keith Long has really made something special there. Yeah, I think Bohemians, um, a, lot, a lot of good things going on behind the scenes of Bohemians. Uh, the supporters love having Keith Long as manager. Keith Long and Trevor Crowley partnership, I think. Uh, um, they've it, it was great for me to go last season and see seven or eight under-21 players in the team. Yeah. Great for the under-21 international team. Mm. I think, um, of course, Daniel Mandrew uh, is, you know, a brilliant prospect. And well, we've got the he goal scored, here. You know, he scored some terrific goals. Absolutely stunning. Um, and that's, that's what Daniel can do. Right or left foot. You know, he's again a right foot player. <laughs> that was his left foot. And I think... Uh, the misunderstood player, very, very talented. Obviously, they've got Danny Grant, who's been in the under 21s, but James Talbot, I've been very impressed with him as a goalkeeper in 22. I think uh, he didn't get into Team of the Year last season, but he had a big say in Bohemians finishing toward. And I was just thinking, like, he showed a lot of character. If you wanted a goalkeeper to save a penalty in the last minute, mm. you know, you'd fancy him. He has the character to do that. And, you, you know, reminds me sort of of. Casper uh, Schmeichel type goalkeeper, you know, that a lot of passion and, and, and character, and I think uh, he um, has a good future also. Yeah, it's it, another team who are trying to uh, create that, that young ethos at the moment, I suppose, is, is Cork City under, under the guidance of former player Neil Fenn, of course. It's a, a difficult job for it's obviously bring that philosophy through sometimes. Well, I think the two clubs, obviously. The two clubs at the moment in the news, Sligo Rovers and Cork City. Mm. Uh, our thoughts are with the players of all of those clubs at the moment. We're thinking about them because obviously they're not getting paid. You know, the, you know it's diff a difficult period for for the players at Sligo and Cork. Um, you know, and that's unprecedented times, of course. You know, and I think um, Sligo, uh, a great community club. You know, I think great community club. I, I would have spent a lot of my Saturday nights in Sligo over the last couple of years, driving over from Inishown to, you know, home in Inishown to, to Sligo, you know, across Ben Bulban. Mm. And, uh, you know, my wife had come on occasions and she loved, my wife Siobhan, she loved, uh, loved to go, and that's her favourite ground, Sligo. And we went, you know, go to matches there, great atmosphere in the ground, real family atmosphere. I think they've had successful times under, of course, Paul Cook and Barraclough. Last year, Liam Buckley rebuilt the team, but again, he's lost Dante Leverock, yeah. they lost Romeo Parks, they lost Chris Twardick, and John Matten, highly regarded central defender, has yeah, broke his leg. Terrible injury. So they've had a difficult start, Sligo, mm. uh, to the season, uh, but it's early days, and I'm sure um, they had, they've had some injuries, and, you know, I think it, it's. You know, it's an important club, it's important to have that geographical spread. Sligo, great football town, and you know, we'd be optimistic they can, they can emerge from this and, and become strong again. Yeah, and like you mentioned there with um, Cork City, a, a, a club of uh, enormous potential. And when that, the, the crowds down there at Turners Cross, it, it's, a, it's an incredible thing sometimes to go down there and experience that. Yeah, it's hard to believe really that. Uh, with, with Cork City, Neil Fenn being their manager, of course, you know, brings me back to when Neil Fenn played for Cork in, you know, 2005 um, to win the league title there. I was the manager of Derry yeah. and uh, Cork was a sellout in Cork, absolute sellout. Um, and they could have sold it out three times. You just couldn't get a ticket <laughs> weeks in advance. Um, the last game of the season, my four seasons with Derry manager, we had to go down to win the league. Cork beat us 2 0. They had a, such a team at that time Kevin Doyle, John O'Flynn, mm. uh, Neil Fenn, Roy O'Donovan, Joe Gamble, full houses. And um, they had a, you know, a, a really you know, a terrific team. And it showed the potential and the passion. Two, ground, two hours earlier, the ground was full. Mm. And it was, you know, that, that to me showed the potential of Cork. It's a big city. Great football city, obviously have had hard times, slow start, very young team, different financial circumstances now, I think. Um, but it, I think they can be optimistic. Gerard Morrissey stayed with the club. Absolutely. He epitomises uh, 
what I like about Cork over the last few seasons, you know, he his work rate is phenomenal. He closes closes you down at a rapid rate, mm. and that was John Fo John Caulfield's Cork were renowned for that. They just were relentless in how they closed you down, and I think he uh, he was capable of gr some well. We've great got the, goals when we well. were discussing making this video. These two goals were the first things that we popped in. Obviously, with Gilroy Morrissey and. The technique as well. Great goals, great technique. Great. That is outstanding. You know, it really is. And I think it's important for them. He's going to be important for them. This was in the same game, remember, as yeah, well. Yeah, because they, they, they have a battle to stay up Cork. Yeah. Now, and, and he's going to be very important to them. His leadership and, and uh, he's going to be very important. He's, he's, he's the thread that links the previous Cork teams now with, with the team at the moment. A lot of young players and he's going to be important. Yeah, and it's it, it, it's a valid point. But obviously, with the young players in in the league, there's so many across across all the teams. Obviously, one of your former clubs, uh, Derry, as well, has, has a lot of young players in the team as well. Declan Devine, obviously, doing some great work up there, and the, and the, all the staff up there as well with the academy, the the influence they have. Yeah, uh, Declan Devine, of course, in his previous stint as manager, won the FAI Cup, and uh, you know, people should remember that. I think. Uh, you know, great, great Paddy McCarthy's technical director there. Uh, Paddy McCarthy, a bit like Steve McPhail as technical director. Yeah. Two technical directors, great players, great feeling for the game. Not looking to be in the lion light, looking to give the managers, uh, not, 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 you know, supporting the managers in a great way. It's a new role, technical director in Ireland, but two great examples of how it's working well. I think um, Kevin Deere, the assistant manager there, and again, very passionate. I think all of those, the, the staff at Derry, they, they love the city, they love the club, it's their club and they should be supported there and encouraged. They haven't made the sta start they wanted. Last year they wanted to re-establish the identity of Derry. I get what they were trying to do. I think this season they've lost Parkhouse, players, yeah. lost Junior, Greg Sloggett. Yeah, Barry um, McNamee. To Dundalk, Barry McNamee. It's hard, it's difficult to when you start something and then you lose your better players. It's just hard, difficult to replace players like that. Yeah. And I think uh, they need their new players will need time to settle in. And they obviously they got into to Europe obviously as well last season. But one of their major contenders for Europe this year, of course, who've put a, uh, got a lot of players in, of course, the St. Pats. And they're, they're looking very strong at the moment and a lot well, of good leadership. There, there you have been in, in Europe. You used to have been in Europe. It's great to have them back in Europe. And they have great European memories there. And I think um, St. Patrick's Athletic... Um, Stephen O'Donnell, you know, natural leader, natural yeah. captain, been one of the great captains uh, over the last decade in and in the history of Irish football, one of the great captains. Um, so it takes time, more than one window sometimes to build a squad that you want at St. Pat's. Um, they've had two, one, two wins out of the four games so far. I think the thing about this St. Pat's team, Christopher Forrester yeah. and Robbie Benson in midfield, Christopher Forrester, such a nat natural footballer, street footballer, very instinctive. Well, he scored earlier in the season. He's one of those midfielders who can just get break a line as well, can't he? He just gets beyond the defender and he's not scared to get forwards. Yeah, he's, he's he, contribute. He, he is. He's a create, very creative footballer, and you know, <laughs> I think he's a joy to watch. And you know, from the from Dublin's inner city, as opposed to Robbie Benson, mathematical genius, you know, and act, uh, qualified actually Robbie. Uh, but a real, cr really, really creative footballer and a terrific person who's, you know, in, in, in one season scored against, against Legia Warsaw, Zenit St. Zen Petersburg and Bate Borisov. Yeah. You know, unprecedented for a midfield player to score goals like that. And they were fantastic goals, none more so than this goal. It's always worth to show it again. Such fond memories. Never get tired of watching this one no. from Robbie. Yeah. And uh, again, on his <laughs> wrong foot, left-footed player scoring with his right foot, amazing goal um, <coughs> in a full house in Warsaw. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah, and it's, he, he's, he's a, it's been such an important player. I'm sure he proved to be such an important player for, for Pats as well. And when you look as, uh, across the league as well, there's been so much flux in the off-season. Pats obviously had to bring a lot of players in. Another team who had to really adjust uh, was was Waterford, of course. They they had to really adjust their their, their transfer and align their transfers so much. And but Alan Reynolds did a, a great job in trying to find that balance there. Alan Reynolds is a very proud Waterford man. He he was ten years playing for Waterford, um, from sixteen to twenty six. When I was manager of Longford, 
I went down and, and signed him. And he was playing in the Waterford in the first division. And he left after 10 years to come and play for Longford because we were in Europe. It was a chance to play in Europe for him at the time. And I think about Alan. <coughs> it hurt him to leave Waterford. He went back again as player manager later. And now he's manager again the last couple of years. And he's Waterford through and through. If John O'Shea is represents Waterford on an international level, yeah. Alan, rep Alan Reynolds represents Waterford on a national level. Uh, loves the club, loves loves the city as well, mm. and he, uh, he he's not got the team of a couple of years. Got a budget in terms of Stanley Abora, Bastian Eri, Ismail Akinade, Doofus, Courtney Doofus. You know, different, a younger team. Yeah, and um, big challenge. They assembled it very quickly before the start of the season. So again, they've won two out of first four, but it, it, it'll be a challenging season for 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 Allen. But I'm sure they can they, they, they can do well. You, it's, it, they've obviously d did very well with that um, win over Derry just last time out. So there'll be plenty of confidence from when we do restart the season. I'm sure in that that, that squad. But uh, another team who will probably be challenging to stay up there would also be um, Finn Harps, of course. Finn Harps uh, have started the season quite well, really, and considering the you know the players they've been able to bring in as well, Ollie, Ollie's been able to bring them up. Well, Finn, Har Finn Harps logistically because where, where they're situated geographically and the, the, the problems that the, clubs have ha the club has had, it's a difficult club to manage. Yeah. And Ollie Horgan has done a terrific job together with Paul Hegarty. Um, you know, I think when you think when they were in the first division, logistically they've got to go to Cove, Limerick, on minimal resources and try to uh, navigate that and just to manage the resources the best that they have. They've been this playoff specialist staying up in the playoffs yeah. a couple of times. Amazing uh, survival last year yeah, as well. Yeah, and uh, this is probably the best team that they, they've had at Finn Harps probably. And the, the signings that they've added, Barry McNamee, yeah. Shane McElhinney, yeah. you know, really. Brian Connolly as well, coming Ryan out Connolly, of non-league. You know, Carlos Sullivan looks a great prospect, uh, David Webb. So, so they've got a really good uh, team this year. It's been difficult for them not to be able to move into the new stadium. It's John Arler. You know, the lack of funding for that stadium, that should have been built and they should have been, should have been moving into it. Absolutely. Um, which would have been a great help to them. Um, and, you know, they do, they're, they represent uh, Donegal brilliantly. Yeah. I know, the, the, I suppose the final, obviously, team we haven't covered in, that the huge return to the Premier Division uh, this, this season, Shelbourne First Division Champions last year. But the revitalisation of that club has been outstanding. The crowds have been flocking back to Tolka. It's, it's great to see, I'm sure like you, yourself, as a proper League of Ireland man, to see Tolka back and properly bouncing. Yeah, it's difficult when a club goes through, and clubs in the First Division now, Shelburne had that period in the First Division for a number of years, and now they've emerged, and it's great new ownership, uh, vibrant ownership, and they, you know, trying to promote the club the best they can, and try and get to, to achieve its potential. A uh, young manager, yeah. uh, Ian Morris, a uh, brave move appointing a young manager. You know, when you're ready, you're ready. I know that myself. I managed Bohemians when I was 30 years of age. Mm. And in, in our fourth season, we won the league. Yeah. So from Ian's point of view, if you're ready, you're ready. And, you know, certainly he's, he's uh, shown himself to be a, you know, a very capable manager last season. I'm sure he's very excited about the season ahead. Signed a lot of experience in there with the young players. Players like Gary Deegan, Carl Shepard and Luke Bourne and Kieran Kilduff of course. Kilduff of course. Kieran uh, already scored this season for them uh, in the opening game a goal to win in Cork and you know he's, he scored <laughs> famous goals against Maccabi Tel Aviv to win and, and against AZ Alkmaar yeah. so he's, he's a, he'll be a great great addition to Shelburne. Uh, one of the uh, memories we've obviously stoked up there is uh, we've been able to find the cliff of it. It's probably rarely seen, actually, because we haven't seen it for a very long time. But that particular match, it brings back a lot of memories. And that winning goal from that, y that year, like, it's, um, <laughs> it's quite incredible. Rutherford over on the left there. Did, 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 did you get emotional when did you see that, Stephen? Well, that was against Shelburne, of course, who had a, gra a great period themselves then. <laughs> Bobby Ryan, he, he never uh, headed, a, headed a goal before and that was his only header ever in his career but to win a league, scoring a header was amazing and it was a great team and it was, it was, it was 
fond memories. Pleasure to manage that team. Yeah, yeah it was a pleasure to a manage that. Thirty-year-old Stephen Kenny right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Um, Have another look, just straight at the back post. That was um, great rivalry at that time. Yeah, when in the Dublin derbies, and uh, the full houses. So it's great to see it. Yeah, special memories, and uh, look, it, obviously, there's so many other. Um, special memories obviously we could go through and you know we look down the list of the first division clubs and we see all the honours down in the first division clubs that, and the community assets they are as well they, it's hugely important to, to, to say it can be difficult getting out of the first division mm. and um, Tim Clancy at draw had a two, two playoffs he's, he's really fine young team doing a gr you know terrific job but draw had a and at loan two former league winners yeah. You know, when you think of Galway United, Longford Town and Bray Wanderers, you know, former cup winners. Yeah. And even Cove Ramblers and Wexford Youth have been to the League Cup final. Yeah. And Stephen, with, you know, the reason we wanted to obviously speak today, obviously to, to go through uh, the, the, the league and go through all the clubs, it's been a fantastic season so far in 2020. Obviously, there's a postponement now, uh, but there's so much to look forward to when it does return in June. Yeah, these are unprecedented times, you know, and it's, um, you know, I think we can reflect on the season that started to date. And, uh, you know, it, it brought great optimism, brought great optimism for a lot of the clubs. And I think, obviously, we're in a very difficult period now. But if it does resume on June the 19th or at some stage, you know, we've an awful lot to look forward to. You know, an awful lot to look forward to. A lot of talent throughout the country, mm. a lot of talent, a young league, a lot of young players coming through at, at all the clubs. Great opportunities for them to really progress in a professional environment. And um, we have that to look forward to for, and for teams and players to really grow and uh, try and achieve their potential. Well, Stephen, it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Thanks for sharing some of the memories and your thoughts on all the teams. And we look forward to seeing you when the football returns. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you.